Welcome to the Entrepreneurs in Bali podcast, your digital escape into the lives of the entrepreneurs living in Bali. I am Daniel Heisoman, and each week we dive into the art of living freely, working remotely, and discovering what it takes to get there. Join us as we explore the secrets to financial freedom, share tips on navigating the digital nomad lifestyle, and hear from nomads who've made Bali their temporary or permanent home, from what they do, how they do it, and how they got into it. We are covering it all. Whether you're here for the strategies, the secrets, or listening for the enjoyment of each entrepreneur story, Entrepreneurs in Bali is your guide to thriving in this island paradise. So hit the follow button, download, and get yourself a coconut so that we can kick off this next entrepreneur's journey together. Welcome to the podcast. This is episode number three. All right. And just to start things off, I would like you to just tell the viewers or listeners we are on both YouTube as videos and on all major platforms Uh as like to be able to listen to it so on Spotify and all other big all right platforms so whether you're listening or watching this podcast welcome and today we have a special guest he has lots of experience in the e-commerce and he will be telling us a lot more about that with some expert experience and skills and some tips and tricks maybe Mm. if we're lucky we'll see (laughs) so welcome Thank you very much, Daniel, uh, for uh, having me. My name is Mino. I'm uh, from Italy. At the moment, uh, we both live in Bali. And uh, to give a, a little introduction on myself, I would say that, uh, I mean, I lived in China many years. I moved yes. to China in 2014. For me, it was a big adventure because uh, I started philosophy. It had, it had nothing to do with uh, what I do now, mm. but uh, something new happened, I wanted something new. And little by little, I get into e-commerce. I work for a Chinese company, French company. I started my own company, then another Chinese company I keep working with. And then last year, I started again my business with a business partner. And uh, last year was uh, the last year in China. I decided to move, nice. to change, to, to start a new chapter of my life. And uh, I've been in Bali for like around four months. And uh, yeah, that's myself. I move uh, a lot, I guess. Nice. When in last year was this? Was this close to the end or the beginning? It was, I think, it was July. Okay, so about the middle. Yes, I mean, I went back to China, it was November 2022. Yeah. They still had a lot of uh, COVID restrictions. Oh, yeah. And that was crazy because I had to fly from Amsterdam to Guangzhou. <laughs> and it was a direct flight, very expensive, very expensive. Sure. And then I had like eight days quarantine. Yeah. And then I experienced China with all those rules that were like mm. quite, uh, I would say, a bit different than what we experienced yeah. somewhere else or in Bali, from mm. what I understand. And uh, yeah, then uh, little by little, like they, they changed, they opened. Uh, but uh, I spent the last year in China developing uh, our product yes. for the new project. Yeah. And um, yeah, like our expertise, my expertise is like... Uh, it's more product developing. Mm. We do physical products. We've been selling on Amazon uh, for many, many years uh, in Europe, US, Canada. We tried a bit Japan, but it didn't work out very well. And um, so what uh, we've been doing is like, okay, how can I get a product that people like? Mm. How can I find uh, something that my clients would, uh, would enjoy, mm. would, uh, would help their lives? And um, we've been studying a lot how to mm. how to basically get as much feedback as possible from them and test mm. and test and uh, reiterate. You get a feedback and then uh, you change maybe the shape of the product, maybe you change uh, something in the product itself. Yeah. Uh, we don't do anything very, very creative in the sense we don't create a new product that's never been on the market. That's not our thing. What we do is like, okay, we see a niche. And uh, in that niche, we see, okay, is yeah. there is some space for us. And uh, we've been doing wired earbuds, yes, like for many earpl- earphones, I think they say in UK, like uh, for many, many years. Actually, uh, with the company I work with still, we are the number one sellers in the US and Europe, North America and Europe, yeah. if you consider the small brands. So if you compete with Apple or Sony, 
we're not there, but uh, considering all like the other guys at the sour level, we sell more than everybody else. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we're pretty good at factory and the quality because, okay, let's say yeah. that we're a bit of Chinese, so yeah. that gives us an advantage, you know, yeah. you not just uh, you buy something on Alibaba, but you actually create our yeah. own design, our yeah. own stuff. Did you we check ever, every single process. Yeah. Oh, sorry. No? Did you ever start by like doing other products, like existing ones, mm -hmm. or did you start from the get-go by creating your own? Because I know there's mm -hmm. quite a big market. It's like they call it drop shipping, where mm -hmm. they basically sell somebody else's product. Did you just go straight into creating your own, or? Uh, yeah, we did that. I mean, with the Chinese company, with my friends, mm -hmm. uh, we started from the get on. Like, okay. okay, we want to get our own design. Mm -hmm. But um, before that, before I started working with them, I was making my own stuff, my own uh, Amazon uh, store. And I was already selling like earbuds. Mm -hmm. And we knew that it was a good niche everywhere. Now it's like 2024, everybody has uh, AirPods or like yeah. Bluetooth stuff. But uh, back in the days, a few years ago, like, uh, while well, earbuds was something pretty cool yeah. and has to do with fashion. Yeah. So we knew there was a big demand. And at the beginning, we just said, okay, you know what? Let's find an OEM. Let's find something that sounds good, mm -hmm. that looks good, and let's just sell it with our brand. Yeah. After that, we got a bit better and said, look, we need to come up with a design that is a little sleek. Mm -hmm. Because in this niche, what you want to compete with is like is the design. But these earbuds are still something that is related to to, I wouldn't say fashion per se, but it's related to the way you want to show yourself to the others. Like, okay, I have like uh, the AirPods, it gives an idea of what I'm doing and what, mm. what, I, what I want to, you know, what kind of brand I like. Yeah. Maybe you have like uh, dark clothes, you want dark earbuds, you want something for the office, you want something more professional. Mm. So you play with the design, that's what we're good yeah. at. Okay, nice. The product that you have now, does it play music or is it just like, yeah, Protection uh, plugs. In the Chinese company is for music in the new project yeah. that uh, I'm the co-founder. Mm. It's uh, it's uh, basically earplugs. Mm. It's something that you wear. It's piece of special silicone. Okay. Uh, they say it's called skin graded. So it's something like yeah. for your ears. Yeah. Uh, there are no BPAs. There's yeah. no nothing like a special silicone. Yeah. Very comfortable. And there are no hardware, no okay. chips, no yeah. speakers, nothing. So it's just like noise cancelling, yes. kind of. Technically, it's called the noise isolating. Okay. Cancelling is active. Yeah, okay. So it's passive okay. noise uh, yeah. isolation or cancelling yeah. is. Would you say it's something that would go for like the like construction things, or is it more yeah. just for like the person that's in a city that wants some mm -hmm. peace and quiet? Uh, we have like uh, different target, uh, different target audiences, mm -hmm. different buyer personas. The construction one is one of them. Mm. Uh, it's not exactly our typical customer. Okay. For that, you would use uh, foam plugs, yeah. foam earplugs, the ones you find on the drugstore. Yeah. What we do is like they're reusable and they're made of silicone. Yeah. So what happens is that uh, you can use them every day. It gives you more, more about like comfort mm. and it's a different kind of effect regarding noise isolation. It's like it's, it doesn't... Um, block completely the noise, it muffles it okay. in a way that uh, all the high frequencies, yeah. the one that uh, gives you stress or makes you uncomfortable, are reduced to the point that you don't feel them uncomfortable. Okay. So they protect your ear. So constructually you could do that, okay. but mainly it would be for people that have some sleeping issues. Mm -hmm. Maybe they sleep in a noise environment, or maybe there is like a um, partner is a bit noisy, let's say, <laughs> like snores a bit. And uh, also for the day life, okay, let's say yeah. work in a co-working space yeah. and it's a bit noisy. You can deal with that, but for some people, if you want to be a bit more isolated, yeah. we want to feel a bit more comfortable at the same time without having something that here, that yeah. hurts your ears, then you can use that. And then we have a third kind of like uh, by a persona, there is people that have noise sensitivity. Okay. Especially in the US, th this issue is, is common everywhere. But there is more awareness in the United States yeah. and in Canada and the UK. Basically, there are people that um, have an issue with sound, with mm -hmm. noise. Too much noise, it's not nice. If you remember when you were like in school, like uh, second grade, I don't know, like <laughs> at that time, uh, there would be, of course, I mean, at least in my country, there would be 
for sure somebody that go into the blackboard doing something like that and then you wouldn't feel comfortable yeah. well this kind of situation it's uh, for many people it's, uh, it's a reality okay. even though they're not kids anymore yeah. it's like they're grown adults and simply the noise is unbearable yeah. it's yeah. a condition it's been studied in the United States and uh, there are many researches so we talk to these people and they say look you need to wear this stuff for a long time of, uh, of the day maybe yeah. for the old day and we came up with a solution that is comfortable and effective at the mm. same time. So if, for example, let's say one of the viewers, they like this whole idea of creating a product and then start marketing that and sell that, mm. and hopefully that might be their way of exiting the office to get to a place like Bali, mm -hmm. and sit in a f fortunate condition like us where we can basically live on an island and enjoy yeah. the freedom that comes with it. Would you suggest that they should start off with like a product, for example, do something like dropshipping and mm -hmm. test the waters? Or mm -hmm. would you suggest that they start off by trying to create something new from the get-go? Mm -hmm. Well, I don't have a lot of experience in dropshipping, mm -hmm. but uh, maybe it could be a good idea. There are two factors to consider. I started my own company with uh, $10,000 in 2017, 18. Mm -hmm. And uh, e-commerce was a completely different game. It's like uh, you could start even with less money, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, you would have uh, a lot of traction because uh, there was so much demand and uh, competition was very low. Yeah. Nowadays, you need to compete on a higher level. It's yeah. like, uh, it's very, very difficult. You need much more money. Yeah. So developing something from your own, maybe depends on your capital, like yeah. on the your resources yeah. and everything. But at the very beginning, maybe it's not the best start. Okay, so it's better and to test the waters in something that's like a little bit less risky and mm -hmm. lower capital to put in up front, yes. would you say? I would do something like that. To be honest, I don't know, maybe because uh, we are digital nomads. We've yeah. been moving around for a long time, even before, before COVID, before it was a thing. Like mm -hmm. now it's, it seems to be pretty common. Yeah. And um, I think when you start, you need to have like knowledge, capital, contacts, resources, mm. so whatever you want to do, you need to, st you can start from scratch, but um, maybe that's a bit more complicated because you're trying something, mm. you don't know if it's gonna work. Mm. What uh, I found personally, also I think my friends that I work with found very interesting is that we've been working like in uh, companies, very successful companies, and uh, I was like in a, a Chinese very big company and uh, that's where you like you. That's where you learn, actually. Yeah. So it's like uh, you don't have to be there like long time. You don't have to spend there yeah. years. But I think if you want to start something that you really like, it doesn't matter what it is. Yeah. Maybe a good approach would be let's learn from the best. Yeah. Let's work with them. Let's cooperate with somebody that's already doing it. Yeah. Because once you get to get uh, an idea of the numbers, mm. of how they do it, and what they do concretely. Yeah then it's another game, it's yeah. much easier than starting from zero. Yeah. You can do it, yeah. I've never done it, but that was my experience and it yeah. worked uh, pretty okay for me, I guess. Yeah. A lot of the books that I've done on business as well, most of them suggest that you actually, if you enter a new market, mm -hmm. for example, let's say if I had to go back and start a short-term rental company all from mm -hmm. scratch, it would have been best for me to actually go and look for work at one place mm. that is already doing it, like an existing company, and then just work like six months or so. And then mm. as I exit, I already know exactly the systems they have in place, the software they use, mm. this and that. And that's why a lot of books actually suggest that. So if there's mm. viewers that want to enter, maybe that's the way to try and get their foot into the door to mm. try and work at an existing company that, that's mm. already doing it. Immediately you get the contacts of all the suppliers, you can mm. see the shipping boxes, you can see the company that it mm. came from, all of that. So that's definitely one way to enter, according to the books, and it obviously makes sense, mm. a good way to get your foot into a door for something new. So if... Yeah, but if yeah, I can add, like... Yes, uh, of course. Uh, I mean, it's not that you want to copy, but you want to learn well, a, yeah, a bit exactly. of like a yeah. business model, right? Yeah. Maybe you can even find out that it's not for you. Exactly, yeah. It's something like, okay, you know what? That I don't yeah. like because I've seen it doing yeah. it and I've seen the boss that release. Yeah. Maybe it's not my lifestyle. Maybe you cannot do it remotely. Mm. Like a variety of reasons, but at least 
you get a yeah. feeling of what's going to be the future. Yeah. And it's okay, that's not for me. I move to something else. Yeah. Like, oh, that's exactly what I want. And then like I can move mm. forward in that direction. Yeah, exactly. And then you didn't have any investment. Otherwise, you start something. Then six months later, you realize it's not for you, as you said. Mm. And then you already have like uh, all your capital in it. And it's a bit too late to pull out then. So mm. that's uh, definitely the best way to go about with that. Mm. If you had to start over, would you have done something different or? Uh, that's a really good question. It's, uh, I think it's kind of philosophical because uh, yeah. in the end, we are the results mm. of what we do, the choices we made. And uh, I'm pretty okay with uh, what I've done before. I made a lot of mistakes in every possible field. Yeah, that's normal. Uh, but you need to learn. Yeah. I learned the hard way, but at least I learned. Mm. And um, if I would change anything, I don't think so. I'm okay with that's it. Good. Yeah, like in any business, if there's anyone sitting in the office want to start the journey of being an entrepreneur, mm. it's destined that you're going to make mistakes. Like, yeah. oh, it's, it's that's like normal. It. Losing money, making mistakes, that's completely normal. So yes. if you start something and you want to jump into the one thing and something goes wrong, don't feel like it's you making a mistake. Mm. It's actually part of the whole learning process. It's yes. destined to happen. You act, I like to look at it at a way that I didn't make a mistake. I just learned something. So that's... Yeah, I agree 100%. Yeah. I think it's actually very healthy. Mm -hmm. I have some friends that uh, back home in Italy, they are very cool guys, they have very good jobs, they are very high skilled, mm. but that part is difficult to get. Sure. And um, I read a book, I think, I don't remember the title, but it was a very interesting book. And it uh, was connecting like uh, how to evaluate intelligence mm. because the traditional definition of intelligence was quite uh, just static. It was like, okay, you're born with this like IQ, you're born with these characteristics, deal with it. Oh, okay. no? And it turns out that actually now they connect intelligence. I mean, they did many studies, they connect intelligence with experience. So that means that you need to go through certain experiences, experiences to learn. Yeah. Maybe it takes a bit more time or a bit less, that's up to you, but if you experience something, some problems, yeah. and you face the issue, and then you're able to solve, or even not to solve, yeah. that is gonna give you a lot, like very good lesson. Yeah. But what is important is the reflection of experience, not just mm. experience stuff yeah. randomly, you need to think it over. Yeah. And that's actually very beneficial, because uh, it's part of the game, as you said. It's like, <laughs> you don't have to be afraid of it, so yeah. with money, you gotta be careful, because yeah. if you're limited from on your capital, yeah. And then you need to make, uh, I think there is a saying, like, fail fast, yeah. right? You want to fail fast before it's, uh, yeah, so, yeah. you know, all in, yeah, right? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So I would also actually suggest for anyone, even if they have a lot of capital, mm -hmm. don't budget or plan, okay, I'm going to start with this business and this business is going to take this much of my capital because, mm. like, be prepared for it not to work out. That should be part of the whole plan from yeah. the beginning. If it's not going to work out, how are you going to exit? Yeah. Like the exit should be almost more planned out than the entering of yeah. the whole plan. Yeah. So I would actually suggest start with lower capital. Even if you have access to all of it, yeah. start with a little bit and just do like proof of concept. Yeah. And as soon as they see, yes, it is working, then you yeah. can go and put in more money and more time hmm. but to touch on what you just said about the experience i believe experience is way more important hmm. than any studies or obviously hmm. like reading books and those kind of studies is very important but for example i spoke to a girl once that is in business school mm -hmm. so she's literally studying business and she was i think she like third year or fourth year of doing it and she had no clue how to start a business. <laughs> I'm just like, what do they teach you? Like, mm. I haven't done any business school other than mm. just books and experience. Mm. And like, for me, it's second nature just to start another business, mm. just to build something like that's non-existent. Mm. So in that sense, they teach you, but I feel like they teach you how to be an employee in a business more mm. than actually starting your own business and that yeah. just defeats the purpose in my opinion because why do they teach you business if they're not really teaching you how to start a business yeah. so. 
Yeah, it's a uh, thing. Is like uh, yeah, it's it's an issue, and mm. in, in the end, it's like uh, uh, it, it's it's a fun part of it, you yeah. know. It's like I don't come from a business background. It's not a philosophy, so it's nothing to do. Maybe in a way it has to do because philosophy is about everything. It's about uh, critical thinking. Mm. Maybe that's also helpful. But um, let's say that uh, I come from the product the product development. Mm. Uh, that's my expertise in China. Yeah. Expertise. Like that's what uh, I've been doing. So. Yeah. And uh, so you need to to go to the suppliers, the factories, and uh, and then like one day I read a book. It was very very useful. I think it's called the Lean Startup, and uh, I really recommend the book. And uh, it gives you a, it's the idea, the theory, the MVP, minimum viable product. It's like uh, how do you get something so basic that solves a problem? Mm. And how, how do we test it? Nice. We want to test it as fast as possible, spending. Uh, as little uh, as possible mm -hmm. and, uh, but yeah one thing is to go to university and learn about this stuff for three four years and have yeah. an exam at the end with a professor that gives you a score oh i think it's much more fun that you read the book and try to apply it by yourself you know like well, doing it for yeah. real and that's pretty cool yeah. it's tiring can be stressing but uh, it's uh, you get an idea you need to test it you uh -huh. know it's much more much more fun i guess so would you, you say that spending, for example, four years in college learning that, mm. do you suggest that over like just jumping in with trying to build your own experience and learn from your mistakes and grow that way? Well, I studied a lot at university oh, yeah. and I cannot say that I didn't like it. It was it's part of me. Mm. But if you want to do business, I think the sooner you start, the better. I don't think you need a degree for that. Yeah. Experience, as you said, I agree 100% is as yeah. uh, much more value. If you get a degree, why not? Yeah. Like, uh, I think everybody develops in a, in a different way. Mm. But uh, yeah, I think the idea that I need a degree in order to do that, yeah, no. I don't think that works. No. I, you don't need it. It's a false assumption. Yeah, definitely. I would actually see, for example, the college as being, for example, if they teach you about business, not just teach you about it, but like have physical assignments where mm. from the beginning of the year to the end of the year you have to start one business mm. for example and mm. then while you study you also practice at the same time mm. and then next year when you go for your second year or whether it's from your second to your third then you have the option of starting another mm. or starting a new one scrapping mm. the old one or even continuing with your existing mm. one and then at the end of the year you are like tested on the pro progress that you've made from the beginning of the year mm. until the end, whether it's starting from scratch or building on an existing one. Mm. I think that would be like super cool and like actually put the what you into action oh, yeah. to practice that as well. I wish colleges could do that. And that would be cool. Yeah. But I guess at the end of the day, it's also the guys in the college who can still do it. Mm. <laughs> He's not going to get assignment at the end of the year but he can still start a business learn by experience and mm. being in college and mm. actually if there's someone sitting in school or in college listening or watching this I feel like I wish I knew now or then what I knew now because you are surrounded by like hundreds of people mm. you know what they like they for example let's say I was in grade nine or grade ten mm -hmm. i know what toys we like as boys mm -hmm. of that age whether it's a rugby ball or whatever it is and we can easily go for example i could have gone on some as you would say like a chinese company and produce some kind of toy mm -hmm. that would oh. soothe that would be something that i would enjoy playing with and then I go to school with that toy. Everyone asks me, where did you get that toy? I'm like, hey, there's a shop online. It's my shop, but you I can know. just buy yeah, it there. All of a sudden, you have literally free marketing. And the more, more of your friends start to play with their toy, mm. the more other great kids would mm. want that. So it's mm. actually so easy to put it out there in, mm. in front of hundreds of people immediately. You don't have to spend a cent on marketing mm. because everyone just sees it. And like, I feel like that, that's such a good opportunity. Now, mm. obviously, we're older, not in school anymore, not in college. So mm. we don't, obviously, we can sit here yeah, at a... <laughs> yeah, different environment, yeah, I guess, no? At a co-working space and have maybe a cool gadget to mm -hmm. like 
almost like your laptop stand that you had, but yeah. I guess that's easily accessible for everyone. Maybe if you make something that's new that no one has seen yet. Then. But yeah, even a different design, yeah. why not? But yeah, you're only like limited to 20, 30, 40 people. Mm. Where in school and college, you're limited yeah. to hundreds, which is... But I think you can start any kind of business. Mm. Yeah. I mean, I was, um, I went to play Padel. If you're in Bali, you like Padel, that's the place <laughs> for you. I went to play Padel and uh, with uh, I met uh, an Indian guy living in Australia. Yeah. And he was studying business, but uh, in the meantime, he wanted to, to do it already. Like, uh, it was even... A bit, um, how do you say, he, he doubt his choice of going to university because it's like, I, I think I'm, I'm, I'm not actually learning, it was mm. his feeling. But then he said, okay, anyway, I'm studying, I'm gonna do that at least for one or two years. And then in the meanwhile, uh, he started his own business. And what did he do? Something very basic. It's like uh, he bought three scooters, three small, mm. three small and was renting them out. Nice. To, to students and then uh, he would get the money back in something like uh, six months yes, uh, that's or good. one year, I don't remember exactly, yeah. but he said like it's a way, I, that's the way I, yeah. I live here, that's the where the money comes from, yeah. from my expenses. And it's something very basic, yeah. I don't know. Like, so it's, simple but... I mean, in the end, like, uh, you need a simple business yeah. you know, to, to make it work. Yeah. And, uh, but the, once you start, like, because, you know, again, I, I studied philosophy. And for many years, math was something kind of, uh, I don't know, esoteric. Something I studied a lot of math, but it, it's difficult for me. Yeah. But once you start like playing with the number and see what happens next, it's a completely different experience than somebody teaching you, okay, that's how you got to do it, you know? Yeah. And especially if you work for yourself, compared if you work for somebody else, the experience, uh, the effort, I think, um, it's just different, you know? It's, mm. uh, it's another level. Yeah. But... Um, because we've been talking about university, if I can add something, it's um, because it's okay, wait, we, we could uh, design uh, better business schools, right? Mm -hmm. And it's a very good idea. I think also that, um, that, that there is like uh, an assumption that uh, I don't like that much. It's uh, yeah. okay, I'm, I'm, I'm not, right? <laughs> but. Um, not yet. I know, I must know. I'm, <laughs> I think I'm pretty fine with that. Again, I started philosophy six years. After six years, I didn't even know how I graduated, but I knew that, okay, that's not for me. Mm. I love philosophy. I love to have philosophical conversation, but teaching in that environment is not for me. Okay. But what I'm saying is like, you can design the best school ever, yeah. and this helps for sure. But I think what you need to check out, especially if you're young and in college, well, what's inside of you, mm. what you really want in yeah. life, you know? And uh, maybe if you're between 20 and 30, well, it's the time for you to, to do a lot of experiences. It's yeah. kind of a cliche, but I think it's true, yeah. you know? Definitely. You need to try that, you need to try other stuff. Yeah. Maybe, maybe do your own business, fail miserably, yeah. but do it anyway, or be successful. Yeah. Uh, you're gonna be also a bit lucky, but you need to try many things. Yeah. Also to realize what you want. Yeah. Because if you think, okay, I'm gonna do that because the school is gonna give me my way to, to top life, mm. I don't think it's going to happen. It's like, it, it always down to what you yeah. want and what you feel yeah. and what you experience as well, you know, yeah. the mindset. And it's something that uh, you can get from the environment, but at the end of the day, it's your choice. Yeah. It's your body, it's your time, it's your yeah. life, you know. And uh, there are many people that love to work in, mm. you know, not even, maybe not in an office. I think the, the conception of the office uh, mm. a bit, uh, how do you say, it's a, it's a bad connotation nowadays, but yeah. uh, not necessarily bad, but you can work like even in another kind of environment and have a stable job. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's just like you need to ask yourself, is this something that you really want? Because mm. if you don't want it, well, you need to start looking somewhere else. Yeah. Maybe you don't want it, but you accept it. And then your life will change accordingly, you know? Yeah. I was in an office job mm -hmm. for maybe two years, I think. Mm -hmm. And this was like shortly after school. Mm. I took one gap year and then I had an office job for two years. It was nice because I was like creative, so I had to like 3D animate things the whole time, All like right. furniture and things like that for big hotels. So it was, I'm a creative person, so I like to make things, nice. so even if it's just on a computer. I was digited, digitally, digitally. <laughs> <laughs> Digitally, oh, it's Digitally. Uh, yes, there's All right, all right. My tongue is looping on that. 
so I was still creating something uh -huh. and I enjoyed that but at the same time like I was sitting the whole day and I just just felt like I want to do something more uh -huh. so that's when I then decided okay started to look at what options there is outside of the South Africa mm -hmm. so that I can maybe do a job where I'm working overseas so that mm -hmm. I get to see the world at the same time. Mm -hmm. That's then how I got into yachting. And then oh. I loved yachting as well. It was just as nice. You get to see the world. You get paid to see the world. Mm -hmm. but you, you were working like on a boat or something? Yes, like on super yachts. Oh, that's very cool. Uh, so I was right. working from 35 meter yachts all the way up to 105 was the biggest yacht I've worked on. And that's for the billionaire. And that's one of the things that I like. Like I get to, there's like 30 minutes. That's one of the things that I liked is I get to like sit in with the billionaire basically. You get sometimes get a little bit of a conversation with them. But one specific thing, there was a, a boat that I worked on in Barcelona. And like that owner, he's su such a cool guy. Like he was literally most down-to-earth guy you would if you see walking in the street you would never know yeah. and his kids as well he's actually australian mm -hmm. and his kids as well like they are so down-to-earth so like well-mannered you would a lot of those rich billionaires some of their kids not always so well-mannered mm. because they're not used to not getting what they want and it's mm. for them it's something foreign like why yeah. why can't i that or something uh -huh. like that they just don't understand and these like even though I had to like go and pick them up from the airport, take them home, stupid mm -hmm. example. But they instead of saying like, "Hey Daniel, please pick me up at the airport," they would like, "Hey Daniel, would you mind picking me up?" Even though I have to, <laughs> I mm -hmm. can't say no. But yes. they still like still ask All honestly. Right. But I've learned so much just by watching them, and that's one of the reasons why I also liked yachting. Is for example like his. These two boys, the one was like 16, the one was years old, right. mm -hmm. and they both had a business <laughs> already oh, okay. at that age. Like, and it's a successful business, doing good. And I'm like driving them. And okay. Then I li listen to a 16-year-old guy on the phone, and it sounds like a like a 50-year-old businessman <laughs> making like business discussions and things. So, uh, that's like, very cool. Yeah, and then I, very cool. I have a chat with them, and then I learn some things there. Uh -huh. Even though I was like 23 at that time, I think, right. and they're like 16 or 17. Okay. So in that sense, it was very cool. And like, there's so much that I actually learned from those like millionaires and billionaires and a lot of things that I want to implement in my own life. Like, for example, the kids, <laughs> I want mm -hmm. my kids also to be mm. down to earth. I don't want them to be spoiled or anything. Mm. But hmm. that's also one thing that I liked about yachting. But the thing that took me out of yachting was I was like in COVID, when COVID hit, I realized like even a stable job is hmm. not always stable because when oh, COVID yeah. hit, I was stuck in South Africa and they said, okay, hmm. they're not going to pay me, which I in a way understand. But hmm. for example, my dad had a business and hmm. he has such a good heart. He was still like paying his employees even though they weren't mm. working because obviously they need food on the table they need to mm. support their own families and stuff so my dad was supporting me but then i realized like a stable job is not always as stable as you think mm. and it's better to have the control in my own hands mm. and that's when i started to think okay maybe i should rather start my own business or start thinking in that way and that's basically where my whole entrepreneurial journey started I would say that was the seed that planted it made me want to do something outside and not be tied to a job and then I obviously started slowly but surely building four years later I was able to quit my job mm -hmm. and now I'm sitting in Bali <laughs> that's very cool <laughs> but what, what would you say was your turning point like from the point where you or was it in college you always knew like you want to start something uh, I think like uh, I have uh, a kind of different story for myself mm -hmm. because uh, I think I had a turning point during COVID oh, okay. and I'm 36 so I was uh, four years ago I was already more than 30. I started my first business when I was 28 mm -hmm. I think but uh, I've been living my life chapter by chapter. I was in Italy there was like the, the philosophy chapter mm -hmm. and uh, 
It was the Mexican chapter. I lived in Mexico for a while. Then there was uh, the Chinese chapter, study Chinese language chapter. Yeah. And then going to university chapter again to study more. Mm. And then uh, trying to, to do a business. The first business I did was uh, still on Amazon, but the idea, I didn't even understand how to make money. My idea was just to be independent. Okay. For me, it was important That's to good. be independent. Yeah. So I didn't have clear ideas. That's what they usually talk to younger people sometimes. I would recommend that. Try to clear your ideas about mm -hmm. what you want. So for me, the turning point, I would say, was around uh, during COVID. I was mm -hmm. forced to stay at home. And in a way, it was nice because I was uh, very close to my parents that had been living abroad for many years. So it was actually yeah. a good way to catch up, let's say. But still, you cannot go out. You don't have lots of freedom. Yeah. And then I started thinking, reading a bit more, and then I realized, okay, maybe it's time for me to start like uh, writing down what I really want, what I want to get. And uh, at a certain point, you it was not like an epiphany. I think that's mm -hmm. the word in English. Okay, it was like that they understood everything. Mm -hmm. It was a gradual process. And uh, if I can give a suggestion uh, to, to the people who are watching, especially the younger one. There is an exercise that I really like, and um, that I did, and it was very inspiring. Basically, maybe you heard it from a movie, but it's not something like uh, you hear in a movie, actually. Yeah. It's like uh, you, you take a paper, yeah. you use your hand, you no know, use like a computer or your phone, take a real pen as you did right now, and then uh, try to imagine, the better word is to visualize yourself yeah. in 10 years. Yeah. But don't write things like in a movie, but try to literally describe when you wake up you open your eyes and you tell me what you see mm. yeah and then you see uh, there's a window and then in the window you see there is a mountain but still you can see the sea that was the, what i saw because i wanted to be in a countryside area yeah. not far from the city but still uh, if i want to enjoy the nature i have like both the mountain and mm. the sea i really like that uh, yeah, uh, for me, for, it's exactly like Bali. The only difference, like for me, I like to ski a bit. So for, oh, if I get okay. the winter here, it would be better. Yeah. But it's just an example. But yeah, you get me. Like, mm -hmm. And then I got my band blankets are like white. The, the room is very small. It's big. It's uh, cold. It's uh, hot. Nice. I have a beautiful wife, a beautiful partner. I have dogs. Depends <laughs> on what you want. Exactly, yeah. you know? But you need to vary it down like an ordinary day. And then you go through the day, what you want to work, if you want a team, mm -hmm. if you want to work by yourself, if you want to work in an institution. You write down what you really like. And mm -hmm. even if you don't realize it, writing it down, it doesn't matter if that paper, what you state, is going to change or not. It's the first raw data. Mm -hmm. They can change later. But once you write it down, you realize, okay, that's what I want. How do I get there? Yeah. Because uh, to be honest, if you want to have an international lifestyle that looks so cool, but if you're not in your hometown and you're in another country, let's say that you get married with a girl or like a boy, like a partner from mm. somewhere else. And then just that, that look, sounds pretty cool mm. actually, just that com implies more money. Because if you have one, two kids, flight tickets are not that cheap, you know. Yeah. And one thing is to have like your grandparents 10 minutes uh, by car yeah. or like 10 hours flight. Yeah. It's a completely different thing. So it's just like, okay, if I want to have that, if I like this kind of business, if I like this kind of job, this kind of place to live. And then there are certain things you got to do to get there, you know. Yeah. Of course, it's just a direction. And, uh, but if you like this direction and then in life you're doing that, you realize that, okay, that's not the right direction for mm. me. And that's what, that was my turning point. Okay. Starting writing down this stuff, even the, the idea that the, the exercise of writing down with your yeah. hand makes them kind of not real, but there. Yeah. It's, it's an object there. Yeah. And that, from that point, I started changing to realize, okay, I want to do a business, I want to do it again. I want to do it differently. I mm. want to make more money. And then I want to get them. That's, yeah. that's, a, that's, a, that's the way I want to develop. Yeah. What's important for me, your values, et cetera, et cetera. And I did that that I was 20, no, I was 32. Nice. I suggest if you do that a bit earlier, I think it's much better. <laughs> yeah. To have a conversation with yourself, yeah, let's definitely. say. But I guess not a, not a lot of people, like they, they don't always think in that new mindset. Mm. So mm. some people might, might only reach like 50. Mm. And now all of a sudden they realize like, hey, I should have done something better, something more with my life a long time ago. But it's... It's never too late, though. They still have who knows how long 
in their lives mm -hmm. so they can yeah, always sure. still make a turning point it's never too late i think a lot of people actually suppress themselves by mm -hmm. thinking it's too late so mm -hmm. even if yeah. they only have 20 years left let's say they reach 70 or they're 60 and they will mm -hmm. reach 80 it's still worth it like mm -hmm. oh I, yeah yeah i spoke to a guy once in my hometown langabon mm -hmm. i was kite surfing and i was like inflating my kite and i saw an old guy i guess he was probably late 70s early 80s all right like old guy and he came up with his kite i'm like uh -huh. yes you like that that's how that's i want to be one that. day yeah and like as and he's fit all right. obviously he has an old body but you can see he's not like unhealthy or anything mm. and he's like inflating his kite and all right Maybe halfway through, I just knew I have to go speak to him. Mm -hmm. So I just went up to him and I told him, like, hey, I just have to tell you I admire how you're still so active and doing kite surfing. You must love it if you're still doing it. And he's like, no, I'm starting to learn now. <laughs> and my mind just <laughs> exploded. <laughs> you're like, he told me how old he is, but I can't remember. And I said, like, you're like 78 or whatever. Mm -hmm. And you're only starting to learn. And kite surfing is not an easy sport to learn it takes mm. a lot of time and you right. fall a lot of times it's oh. difficult to learn to do and he's like going into it starting to learn now and i was just so amazed and he told me that all of his like his mother his father mm -hmm. they all reached like in their 90s mm. almost close to 100 years old before they passed away huh. so he believes that you die the moment you stop living Mm. And that word still stick to me today. Right. So he says he's never going to stop living, and then he will never die. And that's so true, because the moment when you mm. accept, okay, I'm old now, now I'm just going to stay at home, not do mm. anything. Mm. That's the moment when your body actually goes backwards yeah. more and more, because it feels like it doesn't need to be as strong mm. anymore. You don't mm. use your muscles as often, so why have all these energy wasted on Mm. building all these muscles if you're actually not even going to use it mm. now your whole body starts to go backwards yeah. and long story short i was just so amazed and i learned that moment this was when i was like doing that 3d animation all right and this was probably seven years or eight years ago mm -hmm. and until today and probably when i'm 70 i'll still remember that guy wish I have his contact details or something to give him some more praise because mm -hmm. he definitely deserved that. But those words and that inspiration I'll always remember. It's very cool. Yeah. I think, I mean, if you, let's say that you like kiting mm. and you find out that it's the best thing in the world for you, mm. I think you can start anytime. I agree with that. Mm. Imagine that you found out that earlier yeah, and if you want that there is much better. That's, uh, yeah. that's what I'm saying. Like, it's like yeah, like you can start any time, but mm. the sooner the better. Yeah, you and sometimes it's difficult to find what you really like or yeah. want. Eh? But it takes yeah, time. Definitely. So sometimes you think you like something and mm. you try it, and then after two years, you know, a bit over it. <laughs> that yeah, also yeah. happens. Do you know Casey Neistat? No, I don't know. He's a very popular YouTuber, but he's in New York, but his wife is South African, so he goes to Cape Town often as well, but he gets like millions and millions of views every single video he uploads, oh. All right. so he's massive, but he once said, because he, he's maybe in his 30s now, so he's right. still fairly young, um, and he once made a whole video about the fact that his wife's dad that gave him this advice, mm -hmm. because his wife's dad if i remember correctly is like retired but he's older so he told casey to rather work hard and then retire when he's old rather work for example four years and then take one year of oh. like holiday mm -hmm. and then the money that you would have saved up for your retirement you now use in that one year and then you work another four years and that way he's able to like enjoy retirement while being young. Okay. So if you're not waiting until you're 70 or mm. 60 years old. Now you can't do the fun things with your family anymore because mm. your body is not always as strong as it was when you were younger. Mm. Yeah, this is just an example of how one way of looking at mm. enjoying that freedom. But I would say the most 
ideal situation will, will be to find a way to be able to retire young <laughs> and then enjoy the rest of your life. For mm. example, like I believe a lot of people here in Bali mm. are able to turn the thing that they are doing and try and automate that like semi like the mm. conversation we had yesterday. Mm -hmm. You can turn anything into a way to automate it mm -hmm. and if that business are then running itself and you're earning money every month without technically having to work on it, how, how that difference from retirement? <laughs> yeah. So if you're able to do that at a young mm. age, but if you have a full-time job, that's very difficult to do. Mm. But when you have a business, that's easy to do with some experience. Mm. I mean, yeah, in the end, I think it doesn't matter what kind of business you do. You want to get to a certain point of automation. Mm. Could be with people, with tools. Now everybody's mm. talking about Zapier. Mm. I need to get into it because I'm studying <laughs> it enough. Yeah, but you need to get uh, a system that works without you. Yeah. And it's also like after you get that, still it boils down to what you want. But if you want to get bigger, it's also mm. like a condition sine qua non. It's like I don't know if it's in English. You can say that. <laughs> like it's, it's you need that anyway, mm. because if you cannot. If you need to understand every single part of the business, I think. But once you understand that, you need to start delegating or mm. automating. So you still understand the parts, but you need somebody that does it for you. Yeah. So you can focus on something else. That could be kiting or yeah. like making the business grow or like do another business or whatever. Yeah. But you need that at a certain mm. point. Yeah. I, I met, um, I met what, it was in Italy. They, they were talking about, uh, some friends told me there was a very successful guy that had a truck business mm. like he was moving goods in all through Italy with trucks he started from scratch he created something very very big but he was not able to to out of the business yeah. he was still after 20 years sure. taking care of small details yeah. and he told me that uh, once um, there was a car accident with the truck four hours from his place two o'clock in the morning he woke up sure. and he went there he didn't have a system that mm. allowed him to avoid this kind, to deal with this yeah. kind of emergency. Sure. So you have a very successful business, mm. but you cannot get out of it. Yeah. And I think it's also, I want to get to the point that you also enjoy it, you mm. know, and you have people, a team, I think it's very cool to have a mm. team at a certain point yeah. and uh, to work with yeah. and then they, they, they know how to do it and yeah. uh, you grow together. Yeah. I think it's also important that. I've heard a very successful guy said once that there's three stages of a business. One, you physically have to start it and do everything mm. about it. And a lot of people, they stop after that first step. Like they only do that one step and they think like they are satisfied with that and they just continue for the rest of their life mm. with that. But there's two more steps that only the successful people mm. or like super successful people know about and actually implement. And I've been trying, but it's difficult, especially the last one. <laughs> The first one is, as we now said, like you have to, the business should be able mm. to continue to make money by itself. So mm. you should be able to step out, mm. just disappear out of nowhere for no reason. Mm. And the business should still be able to function as usual. Mm. Oh, but then there's step three, where if you step out now, the business should still be able to grow without you. And that's, ah. that's the difficult part. Like, mm. It's one thing to let the business run without you, but it's something else to let it grow without mm. you. And that's something that I'm struggling with in mm. the short-term rental business mm -hmm. because I've tried to like teach people how to get more properties on mm. board, but I understand that no one will be able to do it as well as I do. And that's something you should accept in a business and then allow other people to do it even though they can mm. only do it 80% as well as you. It's mm. always better to get them on board. You can maybe get two people mm. and then it's 160%, I guess. But it's definitely hard to try and get those people to do it in that sense. It's cool. yeah. a very nice idea. Never yeah. heard about it, but it makes perfect sense. Yeah, very interesting. Definitely. That was also a good way of thinking of it because a lot of people, especially the smaller business as you, mm. like a local business, the, unfortunately, the shop owner will always work in his own shop. Mm. So he's n never really going to expand or mm. think about, okay, how can I step out of the shop and let it run itself? Mm. And I feel like the moment when you do that, 
it's actually automatic how you're gonna want to let it grow not necessarily by itself but you you will sit at home and be like i'm so bored now what do i do now that somebody else is in my business running it mm. now you start to think okay let's get another business mm. let's double that one get mm. another one and you get somebody else to run that mm. one so mm. immediately from your boredness you start to expand and grow the mm. one existing business and that wouldn't have been possible if you were sitting in the business working mm. the whole time which i guess that's, that's very cool yeah it uh, makes sense interesting uh, i guess when on f after you've mastered that now you need to figure out how to get somebody else to grow the business for yeah. you and then you can completely that's very tricky, I guess. yeah that's difficult i'm assuming because it's something new concept but it makes sense i'm assuming that um, the second or third step it's also important how you you do people mm. how you cooperate yeah. with people how to motivate them yeah definitely and uh, also understand what they want and yeah. uh, so because you know my experience i don't I'm at, the, I'm at the point that i don't have a team yet i think mm. uh, if the business is good we're launching next month nice let's see what happens <laughs> if we, we're gonna validate the product inside amazon and see get real feedback yeah. from uh, from people yeah. let's say that it works and we get the data we want we're gonna grow little by little, sustainably, bootstrapping. Yeah. At a certain point, we, we want to hire people, nice. unless we want to get to that point. Yeah. If that happens, like uh, I think it's important to figure out how to, to have these kind of details mm. and make a system, a formula that allows you to have people really involved mm. in the project. Mm. And uh, I'm in the team, in the, in the Chinese team, and that works very well. Nice. So like um, try to motivate and uh, try to always uh, connect uh, what you do, the results with your work, with the mm -hmm. value. And uh, sometimes it's a bit difficult because it's uh, you know, every, everybody does something different. Mm -hmm. But uh, this kind of connection, like uh, what you do is related to the performance, to the results, mm -hmm. seems to be useful, important. Mm -hmm. And I hope to get to the point that I have this kind of problems, I mean that the business has been yeah. growing. So it's, uh, I think it's, uh, at a certain point you need a team yeah, anyway. Definitely. One of the biggest things is you need to accept that people are not going to be able to do it as well as you. That's mm. something that a lot of books has told me, mm. especially, and I want to share this with the viewers. If every, anyone has a business and they want it to grow and expand, a lot of the things that people fall for is they feel like nobody can do it as well mm -hmm. as I can, so they never get somebody to fill that role. And obviously it's true, no one's going to work as hard on your business if it's not their own business. If it's just a job for them, they're not going to work as hard as you would working on your own business. Mm. But at the end of the day, it's something that has to happen and you have to accept mm. that it's not going to be as well. So yeah. next month, as you said, your product is coming out. If there's yes. viewers that want to have a look at it or buy or whatever, yes. where can they find that? If you're from the US and you have an Amazon account, we're going to start with Amazon. Yes. And later, again, if we validate the product, that means uh, if the people like what mm -hmm. we created, if you want to tell you a bit more about that as well, that in that case, we're going to have like a platform or Shopify. You can find us typing soft bliss, like software mm -hmm. and blissful, like soft bliss, mm -hmm. earplugs. And uh, you should find us, hopefully you're going to find us on Amazon.com. We're going to sell from there. It's the biggest market. Yeah. And um, it's a project I really care about nice. because it's yours. It's a, mm. I run a business for a while before I didn't know much about it. I just went with the flow trying to do something. Nice. Now it's like uh, after years of studying and uh, yeah. having clear what our goals are, it's a different thing. But um, we wanted to start from the product. And it's something that uh, many people see marketing, something, get a product and uh, talk about it to everybody. And, we still think that the, the best marketing is the product itself. Yeah. So, especially if you want to do e-commerce, and, uh, and nowadays with all this competition, international competition from everywhere, I'm not just talking about uh, Chinese or American, there's the Pakistani guys that do yeah. a lot of that. Everywhere, all the world is doing uh, access yeah. uh, to this marketplace. So yeah. we need to, I think what's important to come up with an advantage Something that is difficult to copy, mm. something that um, it's kind of unique mm. and people like. And uh, if you want to get into product development, I suggest you to read, actually, to watch some videos on YouTube about uh, 
the job to be done, your probability will be higher to do a job. Mm -hmm. um, maybe you're familiar with that. And it's a, it's a very cool theory. So last year in China, we've been developing this product. We developed our own shape. Mm -hmm. We started from the customers, from the pain points. And uh, I have some sleeping issues sometimes, and my mm -hmm. business partner has this noise sensitivity. Sure. So we've been struggling with these uh, things for yeah. many years, That's for earplugs. We've been yeah. using earplugs for many years. Yeah. To be honest, my partner has been using them much more than me, but sure. I use them as well. So we kind of like, we, we have uh, yet to understand mm -hmm. what people have, to, have been through yeah. in this niche. So we came up with our own solution, and then we tested with early adopters, nice. with people in the United States and Canada that have been using the competitors for long oh, periods yeah. of time. And what do you want to get to know if your product is good enough to start actually making it and producing is to get the switch. It's like you, you, we contacted these people through Facebook ads, mm -hmm. and we wanted to get the people that were actually in this niche that have been using the competitors and then say, look, we want to try our product, uh, it's for free, free for us. Yeah. Not with a customer, that's the only yeah. thing that maybe conflicts with the theory, the yeah. MVP theory. But you want to see if they actually start using your product, your prototype, instead of the competitors. Yeah. And um, our idea is that uh, half of the people we shipped the product mm. didn't reply to our service. <laughs> So half of them didn't, we didn't, these are the yeah. numbers, I'm yeah. not uh, making, uh, yeah. half of them like didn't reply at all. Yeah. But the other half of them, 90% told us, I'm just using you guys, I don't yeah. use the competitors anymore. <laughs> nice. This is the kind of data that is, again, is not real validation. Mm. The real validation is when your product is on the market. But this kind of data is, uh, is the base, in my opinion, is the base for something extra, for something, mm -hmm. okay, we got something going on here, yeah. then we got some value here, let's go further. But if you don't get to that point, I don't think you should start, like you, you yeah. need to, to go slowly, you know? Because yeah. anyway, if you want to make, I don't know, soap or a lotion or like a book or whatever, mm -hmm. the, the, the world crowded with products nowadays. Yeah. 10 years ago online, you couldn't find much. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, there are too many products. Yeah. So unless you can stand out, Unless you can make something that people say like, wow. Otherwise, like you need to yeah. think about it carefully. That's, that's our experience in e-commerce. Yeah. Again, it's, it's a bit different than like uh, local businesses or like other stuff. It's not a software, it's a physical thing. It took us one year to develop, to test it until we get it right. Nice. But if you don't get to that part, I think it's, uh, that's uh, something you want to think about it a bit yeah. more. Yeah. That's my experience. Like uh, yeah. I think it's important to share. Very, that's my. Definitely. And don't don't be, <laughs> don't be because like uh, you can do anything you want. You can start from little. Yeah. We want to be. We are very ambitious. Let's say, yeah. and then we want to get to that point. But again, if you can, the idea is that. You, uh, what what is my, you want to do? I agree with the Seth Godin, mm. the American guru, yeah. very very cool guy. What is marketing? He asks, and then he says, okay, marketing is to bring change to a certain amount of nice. people, to your people. Yeah, it's not good. about selling something. That's, that's part of the game, but yeah. you want to help somebody yeah. that has a problem. Yeah. How can I make his life better? How can I change his life? Yeah. That's the way I think you got to see it. I yeah, think it's, uh, it's also very ethical, you know, because mm -hmm. sometimes people just say, I want to make money and stuff, but I think if you put yourself in the shoes of somebody that is helping other people, yeah. this also, I think, very motivates you know, yeah. on a different level. You Definitely. Know? I believe in marketing in general as well. You have to, if you want to, like, for example, advertise this pen, you don't say, like, buy this pen because the pen is a good pen. You say, like, you can write down amazing things with this pen. You, yeah, yeah. you say, what? impact it will have on the customer instead mm. of saying what its capabilities is yes. because that's yes. i feel like then it's more about helping the customer as mm. you just said now mm. more than trying to like help the business mm. trying to sell more yes. products it's not the way to advertise it's trying to help the customer mm. sure so if there's anything where would you like customers to be able to, or customers you know, like potential customer. customers <laughs> like viewers or listeners mm. Where can they reach you? You want them to follow you on some social media? Yes, uh, I think we can share the LinkedIn, my yes, LinkedIn. I don't use them much, but uh, if you text me, I'm going to reply you within 24 hours. Usually that's my time. Nice. I also have Instagram, 
that I don't use much, but I reply there. I don't, I don't put pictures, but uh, <laughs> why not? You can, they, okay. you can find me there. And, I will uh, leave all the links down yes, below. Yes. So that will be in the description. So thank you. Thank, thank you, you much for joining in the podcast and thank you for the pro tips. All I'm right. sure they've learned a lot. I've learned a lot. Right. But I appreciate it, cool. it. Thank you. I appreciate it. Until next episode, hopefully one day you'll join us again. Sure, <laughs> let's see. And then we can find out how the product went. Yes, yes. The difficulties that you had with it, the things that you learned from it, what you liked about it, how yeah. it turned out and all of that. Sure, that sure. Be interesting for the viewers and listeners. That would be very cool. Yeah. By all cool. means. Cool. Thank you. Right.